The question after the Long Beach Grand Prix was not whether Sebastian Bourdais went over the pit exit line, which we know for sure was a violation of the rules. The question was whether the Verizon IndyCar series made the right call to penalize Bourdais for that move after Scott Dixon, shown immediately next to him, moved the Frenchman over. So we're going to start off by watching the replay four times. The first time, regular speed. At full chat, it all looks fairly normal. Dixon's move doesn't look particularly aggressive. Bourdais looks very reactive. Slow it down to half speed though and you see Dixon come across basically a full car width and Bourdais moves over a half car width to avoid. And once we get it down to a quarter speed you can see even more how the reaction of one driver influences the other. Let's take a final look one step slower before we move into stills. Let's start out here by looking at where the noses of their respective cars are placed on the track. You see far right Dixon, his nose is definitely to what is our right coming into turn one. You see the blue line there that he is, uh, his tires are almost on. You look across to Bourdais and he's on the inside of his own line. So if you look at Bourdais' nose inside of the line, Dixon's nose definitely inside of that painted line. Then also look at the gap between the two, where they're at in this frame. They're both pointing forward, heading towards turn one. Now let's note in the second frame where the noses of the car are placed. You can see Dixon starting to defend, moving over. His nose is now almost center line with the white painted line that we've done here highlighted in blue. You can see that Bourdais has also started to move slightly in reaction, noting that Dixon's coming over. He's moving as well. You'll also see that the gap between the two of them, which is about one full car width in the previous frame, starting to shrink a little bit. And now we're starting to have fun. We can see Scott Dixon starting to defend, which is his right. He's almost a full car width across from where we started out here. We can also see Bourdais has moved definitely in reaction. You can also see that that gap between the two of them is getting even smaller. Keep in mind these two are teammates in sports cars. They have a great affinity for each other, so there's no real animosity here. But this is definitely one driver seeing the other one move, and this is what we're starting to get into, this penalty about to come up. So here we have both cars. You can see how far they've come from the lines we're using as a benchmark for distance. You can also see how small, or relatively small, the gap is between both cars. We can see in the red dotted line there, the upcoming pit exit line that Bourdais is about to run over. This is where I'm starting to wonder whether IndyCar, in their decision to penalize him, said, hmm, you could have done two things. Either hugged up closer to Dixon, and you still might have put your, what would have been Sebastian's right side tires on that line a bit, the upcoming red line, but I think it would have been a relatively narrow interaction between the two. Um, that's where this is where I'm starting to wonder if that's what they're thinking, and also whether the concept of whether Seb could have backed off and essentially given up that spot to Dixon and fallen in line might be part of their their way of forming the penalty that followed. We're safe in saying that any serious driver like a Bourdais, a Dixon, a Rossi, in the heat of battle, backing off is not going to be the number one option. It's not going to be the tenth option. We should also consider that in the heat of battle here, these guys are not weighing, should I do A, B, or C? How might the rules apply? Would the race director think positively or negatively upon what I'm about to do? They are judging space and time. They are indeed reacting to one another, doing their best. But this does come back to what race control might be thinking. They did penalize Bourdais. Part of me, again, thinks that whether it was the back-off option they thought he should have done, or looking at the gap between he and Dixon, something in there might have made them feel compelled to penalize the Frenchman. We also know that in this frame here, looking at the fact that he's about to run over this line, looking at the distance he has between himself and Dixon, also thinking that Seb is seeing, aha, I can cut in here, make this crazy crossover pass that we saw, and pull off something that we're all still smiling about. And now it's time for you to play judge and jury. We can clearly see Bourdais across the line. No question he's run afoul of that rule. But coming back to the original question in hand, was the Verizon IndyCar Series correct in assessing a penalty knowing that he moved and started on a trajectory that led him to where he is based on Scott Dixon 
starting to defend his position as the two entered turn one. At the start of this, the first screen capture, we saw that both cars, their noses were pointing forward, heading towards turn one. Dixon starts to move over, Bourdais starts to move in reaction, and they do end up on this arc to where we are right here. But you also look at that gap between Bourdais and Dixon and have to wonder if IndyCar was thinking, hmm, you maybe could have run over it a little less or missed it for the most part. You also have to wonder whether they think Dixon moved enough to warrant Bourdais moving over how much he did. These are all questions we're hoping you're going to provide answers to. Give us your thoughts on again. Put on your IndyCar judge and jury hats. Leave comments in the section below. All right, I'm Marshall Pruitt. Thanks for watching.